So this video is going to be about the classification of organisms or how we kind of divide organisms into different groups. So classification. Uh, the first word to know is taxonomy. Taxonomy. And that is the study of identifying, classifying, and naming organisms. So there are scientists who are named taxonomists, and this is their job. Um, they identify new organisms. Uh, there are new ones being found all the time. They classify them, so they kind of figure out um, what group to put them in, what they're similar to, and then they name them. So they get to name the organisms that they uh, discover. So many different ways of classifying have been tried. Um, they used to divide things into plants or animals. And then we discovered with microscopes this whole other world of stuff that wasn't a plant or an animal. So that didn't work. And then they used to classify based on what organisms looked like. Uh, but this became a problem because a shark and a dolphin kind of look similar. They're both gray. They have similar kind of shapes. They live in the ocean. So they should be in the same group, right? Well, hopefully you guys know by now that a shark is a fish and a dolphin is a mammal. And they have very different um, organs. They have different ways of, of living and going about their stuff. They're, they're very different animals, okay? So that didn't work. Just kind of looking at them on the surface level didn't really work. Um, if you looked at things on the surface level, you also probably wouldn't think that we we're related to, you know, chimpanzees or anything like that because we're not covered in fur and we're bigger than they are. So that didn't really work either. So now we use their cells, how they get food, and how they reproduce as the first steps in classifying. We use these as kind of like a general basis to kind of get started. And then once we kind of narrow it down, then we start looking at more specific things. But the first couple things we look at are their cells. Okay, what do their cells look like? How do they get their food and how do they reproduce? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, classifying helps us know what is related to each other and how organisms have evolved. So even though the shark and the dolphin kind of ended up in the same place and they look similarly, they have evolved from very different um, ancestors because they have different organs, like the, the shark lays eggs, the dolphin gives birth to, to live young um, a shark is cold-blooded, a dolphin is warm-blooded, things like that. They have very different um, bodies, and so they have evolved in different ways because they have different ancestors. Okay, so let's take a look at the questions we're going to be asking, okay? So these first two questions will be a review of our cells video. So we're going to look at the cells of the organism. Are they prokaryote? Do they not have a nucleus? Or are they eukaryotes? Do they have a nucleus? So if they're prokaryotes, they get put in one camp, and if they're eukaryotes, they get brought over here, okay? So that's one way we can kind of divide up organisms. That's actually a really quick way. That's like a pretty cut and dry. Either it has a nucleus or it doesn't. Um, is it unicellular or multicellular? So again, if it's multicellular, it has to be a eukaryote. Remember, because those two things go along together. But if it's unicellular, there's a couple different um, groups we could put it in for that. Uh, next, these other two are going to be new ideas. So how does it get its food? Does it make its own food? And I don't mean like, does it go in the kitchen and get some Easy Mac? That's not making your own food. Um, does it make its own food within its own body? Like a plant is a really good example. Plants make their own food. Algae make their own food. They use um, air and sunlight and they convert it into sugar and that's how they eat. Okay. They don't have to hunt or find food and kill it or, you know, try to convince, you know, flies to come into their spider web or something. They make their own food, okay? If they make their own food within their body, then they're called an autotroph. Autotroph. Auto means, um, like, same. Autotroph. Like, it does it automatically, okay? If it has to find food, like us, we have to go to the grocery store or lions have to hunt, or fish have to feed on plankton, or whatever. If they have to go find their food, then it's called a heterotroph. And organisms that just kind of sit around and let the food come to it, that's still a heterotroph. I know there's some fish that lay at the bottom of the ocean and the food just kind of comes by. That's still a heterotroph, because the food, it has to eat. It's not making the food in its own body. 
So if it makes its food itself, then it's autotroph. If it has to get food or it has to eat stuff, then it's a heterotroph, okay? And then lastly, and I'm gonna warn you, we are not gonna go into details. I don't want giggles. It's just a word, okay? Is how does it reproduce? If it only needs one organism to reproduce, then that is called asexual. Remember that a on the front of a word means not or the opposite of, so it's asexual. So there are bacteria, um, there are some worms. I know there are some uh, very basic fish that can do this. Um, asexual reproduction is basically you have an organism, it splits in half, and now you have two organisms. So like I know there are some worms that the worm itself kind of splits in half, and now you have two worms, and that's asexual. Like, it doesn't need any help, it just kind of does it by itself. That's asexual reproduction. If you need two organisms, you need a male and a female of an organism, then that is called sexual reproduction, and that's as far as we're going to go with that. So you need two, sexual, only one, asexual. Enough of that. Okay. So the first kind of group that we put them into are called domains. Um, after we get them into domains, we kind of narrow it down and narrow it down and narrow it down and get more and more and more specific in our groups, and you'll see that in a future video. But the first kind of grouping that we do is called a domain. So it's the first level of classification. Organisms that are similar get put in the same domain. So if they have stuff in common, they're going to go in the same group or the same domain. Um, this is actually a really kind of new idea. Uh, I know the green textbooks that we have, uh, it doesn't mention domains at all because domains were introduced after your books were printed. So domains were introduced in the early 2000s. Uh, before that, the highest level or the first level classification was called the kingdom. And we'll learn about that in a future video. But domains are now the top level. They added a level to the top, top of it. So domains are new, uh, about 10 years or so. There are three domains that organisms can get kind of filed away and kind of grouped into. The first is archaea, archaea, okay, yeah, bacteria, that one this should be familiar, bacteria, and eukarya, and you should probably be able to guess what goes in this one. So archaea, bacteria, and eukarya. And so we're going to talk about each of those domains and kind of what, um, their characteristics are. So the first one is archaea, and this one is also a really new kind of grouping. It's probably the newest group of organisms that we've uh, decided deserve their own group. Um, archaea are all prokaryotes, so none of them have a nucleus. Because of that, if they don't have a nucleus, they are always unicellular. So remember, these two things always go together. It's prokaryote, it has to be unicellular. Archaea can be autotrophs or heterotrophs. Some uh, archaea members make their own food and some have to go find it. They can be asexual or sexual reproduction, kind of depends on the individual type of organism. Um, the main thing to keep in mind with archaea, archaea actually comes from a Greek word that means ancient. So these are really, really, really old creatures. They have been around for a really, really, really long time. Um, this is kind of the stuff that was, we think might have been some of the first life on earth. So it's really basic. There's not a lot going on. They're prokaryotes, they're unicellular, they're super teeny tiny. But the main thing that kind of sets them apart is that they can live almost anywhere. They live in volcanoes. They live in really super hot, um, you know, where there's a crack under the ocean and the magma comes up, those vents. They can live there. They can live in environments that are incredibly acidic. They have a lot of acid in the environment and they can live in almost all of it. So these things are like tough as nails, can't get rid of them. They're super basic, but they can live anywhere. So that's kind of what archaea is kind of known for. Bacteria, this is kind of the bacteria that you think of. Um, so bacteria that's good, that helps make yogurt um, do its thing, or E. coli that makes you sick, or like sinus infection, bacteria, bacteria, okay? They're prokaryotes, they have no nucleus. They're all unicellular. They can be autotroph or heterotroph. So there are some uh, bacteria that do have to find food, but others will make their food, just kind of depends on the individual. 
and then they can be asexual or sexual reproduction. So these two have a lot of really similar um, characteristics with the environment they live in being the main kind of focus of archaea, okay? Now we come down to eukarya, and the EU should tip you off that this is the domain of eukaryotes, and this is a huge um, domain. So they're eukaryotes, which means they have a nucleus. They can be unicellular or multicellular. Remember that eukaryotes can be either, but if it's multicellular, it has to be eukaryote. If it's unicellular, it can be any of these. If it has a nucleus, it's unicellular or multicellular. Um, it can be an autotroph or a heterotroph. So like plants, they make their own food. They're in the eukarya domain. But we have to find food, but we have a nucleus in our cells, so we are also in the eukarya domain. So plants, fungus, and animals tend to all be in the eukarya domain. And the main reason for that is because we all have a nucleus in our cells. We don't have a lot in common with a fungus. I mean where people, we move, we talk, a fungus sits there on a dead log. But we both have a nucleus in our cells, so that's something. So we get put in the same group with them. Um, and then they can be asexual or sexual reproduction. Just kind of know that. Okay. So archaea, bacteria, eukarya. Um, the groups are fairly broad, so there are a lot of different things, like I said, that go into eukarya, but once we kind of start narrowing it down even further, then we get more specific. Um, animals and plants and fungus, we are on the same domain, but the next level down, we get separated out because we're totally different from each other. So these are the three domains, um, and then the other levels of classification we'll talk about next.